Hey there, my name is Lilith and I'm the creator behind fashion art label Ziggentala based in Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to part two of fabric paint troubleshooting. Uh, this is the second video of a two part video series. If you haven't seen the first video before clicking on this one, I would recommend that you watch that one first because there is a lot of information that you will need to know for this video to make sense. I also did a little experiment at the end of the last video and I'm going to show you the the results of that experiment now. So if you have no idea what this is or what any of what I just said means, please go watch the first video and this video will make much more sense. Uh, so we're just going to jump straight into it. We're going to be looking through a conversation that I had with an artist that was having a lot of different issues with a particular fabric paint. So we're going to look into that and we're going to draw on all of the knowledge that we got from the video before so that's knowing if you have pigment issues binder issues solvent issues or sort of using that knowledge to realize how you can sort of troubleshoot your way through a pop problem and make a solution sometimes you have control over the situation or the problem sometimes you can't because it actually can come down to the paint but we're going to be exploring a couple of issues that this particular artist had today I'm just gonna jump straight into the results of this paint test It took a long time for all of these paints to fully dry. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pick the paints off of this plastic container. They are fully dry and essentially they are just a, a binder and a pigment. The solvent has completely evaporated. Because of the thickness, the craft paint took the longest to dry and the set of color opaque was second and like the Posca paint pen was dry within 10 minutes of me applying it just as some information that we need to know when we look at these results. So I'm gonna look at the craft paint first. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick this paint off. This paint, the craft paint, is very rigid. I've taken it off of the plastic container and you will see when I show you the video, but I've taken it completely off and you will see that the paint is somewhat elastic but incredibly rigid, so if I actually pull the paint apart, it snaps. It's quite fragile in that it can't really stretch anything more than sort of what the body of the binder is as a dried paint. There is sort of a th threshold of its elasticity and that's just because craft paint usually is put on a fixed item or an item that doesn't really move much, so like a canvas or I don't know, like an ornament. Which is why when you sort of play with it like that, it's bendy, but it can't stretch. Second paint we're gonna do, we're gonna look at, is this paint here, which is the Set of Color fabric paint. Can you see how stretchy that is? This paint is incredibly flexible. Look at sort of the resistance with this paint. and how flexible this paint is. There is no stretch in this binder whatsoever. So this type of binder is a little bit more rigid. I've just sort of rolled all the paint up, but it's sort of like blue tack, it's quite tacky. And that's something that you should probably keep in mind. The Posca paint pen, you can see, there is no sort of elasticity or binder. Well, there is a binder. This is essentially the pigment and the binder left, but the body of the binder is quite thin very thin i hope looking at those paint examples sort of clears a couple of things up for you the acrylic paint is incredibly rigid there is a threshold to how much you can stretch it and it's quite rigid and it's quite thick and that's the, the those are the sort of properties of the binder well a craft paint is used for things like canvases or you know things that you wouldn't usually think would bend out of shape. Whereas when you look at something like a fabric paint, which is made for fabric, the binder is gonna be a little bit more elastic and it's going to be a little bit more flexible and have some more give. The interesting thing 
is that obviously it would be much more interesting to even see the binder and the pigment of fabric paint after it's actually been heat fused. And then you will have seen as well, I did use a Posca paint pen for the third paint application and you will see that there isn't even that much elasticity or much of a body that I can actually pull off of the plastic container. I can only really scratch it off because of the way that that paint was made to be used through a texter and textures use ink and Posca paint pens are great because it is paint but because it is still used through the application of a texture, the solvent would have had to thin the paint out a lot and you can't have goopy paint coming through a texture pen. You might just be thinking all of this is uh, pretty much common sense, but also I just think it's really good to be able to know how this stuff works. Obviously I did use Cetacolor Opaque and I use Cetacolor Opaque fabric paint all throughout my channel so far just because I've used this fabric paint and I've loved it. I've loved the pigments, all the different colours, like the different ranges. You've got like opaque pigments, you've got metallic pigments, and then you've got different pigments that can be used for different mediums of fabric. But also the binder in Set of Colour Opaque I find has always been quite, it's always done its job for me. It's been very, it's very elastic and it's always stayed on a denim jacket. So when you're looking for a fabric paint or say you are experimenting using an acrylic paint but using a fabric paint medium to mix into your acrylic paint to make it um, fabric paint. It would actually be a really good experiment for you to do exactly what I just did just now because it'll just show you and make you understand sort of what you need to be looking for when you are painting on denim jackets or clothes or pillowcases or you know doing a decorative tablecloth or anything like that. You need a paint with a binder that is going to be elastic, it's going to be flexible, it's going to be durable. So that was the whole point of that experiment. So towards the end of my last video, I did, I was sort of touching on how you can apply the knowledge of knowing pigments, solvents and binders and how to help and how you can sort of help that with your own art practices. And I'm going to, we're going to basically do an exercise today and I'm going to show you basically uh, the different problems that I had from a fellow artist. This artist is from Malaysia and he messaged me through Instagram. It all started when he said that he had found my YouTube channel. And if you watch a lot of my videos, you will know that the fabric paint I use is Cetacolor Opaque. He reached out to me because he had bought Cetacolor Opaque. I assume that he hadn't really used it before, but this is what he said. Hello, I came across your YouTube channel and I also noticed that you use Cetacolor. So currently I'm having problems, doubts with my paint and I use Cetacolor as well. I bought it at a craft store and it was on clearance at the time. Hope you can help me out because I've been looking for answers everywhere. You've come to the right place. My question is that have you ever encountered where paints don't seem to dry off completely because the one I'm working with right now it seems as if the paint still hasn't dried and it has been like a week. My technique of painting is that I paint two layers of white so I could get this vibrant colour when painting as usual and then paint like normal. The denim had been pre-washed and was a higher cotton percentage so honestly I don't know where what went wrong either the paint is broken or it's just me. Oh no my paint it's broken. Okay so off of the bat let's look at let's look at his problems. The first thing that he he says is that he is having problems. He doesn't know whether the paint is drying properly. So we know that the whole process of paint drying is the evaporation of the solvent to leave the pigment and the binder behind. He also mentions that he uses layers and it's good because he's already sort of explained he uses layers because of some opacity issues with pigment and naturally I think this is something that most artists do and I've mentioned this in a couple of my videos if you do want a brighter colour it's better to sort of build up your layers or just to paint a foundation of white to then put your colour on top paint doesn't seem to be dry and it's been a week I then ask him, have you heat fused the paint yet? I usually say you should leave your fabric paint for 24 hours before heat fusing it because I think you want to make sure that all of the solvent is going to be out and the fabric paint isn't going to be wet because if you do heat fuse when fabric paint is wet you'll get a lot of transfer. I actually haven't properly looked into layers and how that actually affects the solvent from evaporating because when you think about the experiment that I did before the thicker 
the paints were, the longer it took for the solvent to evaporate to leave dry paint. I definitely think that maybe there could possibly be a problem even between making sure that the different layers dry properly. He does say that he paints two layers of white. I would usually just do one. That could possibly be a problem. And I think you have you have the same sort of sort of practice when you paint on walls. I definitely know that it's something with nail polish. You know that the more layers that you actually build up, the longer it takes for the whole thing to dry. So I think that if you are you are creating a thicker sort of layer, it might take a while for the solvent to evaporate out and for your paint to be completely dry. We don't know if this is the problem, but I'm just I'm just like brainstorming through the sort of stuff that we've been talking about. So I said, hey, have you heat fused the paint yet? So usually, if you heat fuse a paint and there's no transfer, I would usually say that means it's dry. So he says, yes, I have twice, one with cloth pressed and the second time reversed. What do you think? It does feel tacky. I didn't get the chance to dry under the sun though. I just air dried it in my room. Uh, let's talk about tackiness. So when I showed you in the particular, in this experiment before, I showed you how um, flexible and durable fabric paint is when it's dried. It does have a certain tackiness to it. And I think that that is probably just part of its flexibility. And I'll be honest, like sometimes I will look at other t-shirts and you know, fabric paint that's been used to print t-shirts has some sort of tacky quality to it. I have personally gone through the last couple of years and I've been very aware of tackiness and I've always thought that this was maybe a feature of it not being properly dry. But the thing is, is that I also now, I've got jackets, I've got a whole rack of jackets in front of me here behind my camera where I've got a jacket that I painted like three years ago. So I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the paint would be very dry, very much dried. I have heat pressed it and I have washed it. Nothing has come off, but it's still tacky. Coming from that process, I can honestly say that the solvent has left the building and the paint is dry. The tackiness may be the reason why you might think otherwise. And I think maybe that's what this artist has. But knowing the experiment we did, I think it's just a feature of the paint. And if you don't like that, then I think then, then maybe there might be room to explore and see if there are any other paints that aren't as tacky. But then for me, the tackiness is a, the tackiness is a feature of the stickiness and the flexibility so I feel like if you've got a, if you've got a paint that's not as tacky it might be more rigid moving on from that he is also telling us all of the ways that he's used to create to make sure that the solvent has left so he hasn't air dried he's air dried it great uh, evaporation takes energy so if you can actually apply heat that is um that can also help he said that he hasn't put his jacket under the sun i have a weird thing about putting things in the sun just because i am very protective of my pigments and my colors and i don't want to put something out in the sun for it to fade not that i think it would if you just put it out there for 10 minutes i personally never put things in the sun but if you're looking for other ways to sort of speed up this evaporation process of the solvent i think i do say I said, maybe it needs some heat. Have you blasted it with a hairdryer? He says, haven't tried it, but if I heat set, wouldn't that have dried it off? I mean, it is heat or does it work differently? I do say, that's what I would have thought, but irons use steam, so the heat will have had some sort of moisture to it. A hairdryer would be a dry heat as there is no moisture involved. I would have thought it would have been dry anyway too though, especially if you've done it twice. And I was actually looking on some forums the other day when I was when I was researching the other day about paint. <clears throat> Cause I've got an exciting life. <laughs> I did actually see that some people like say that you should use the driest iron setting because I think putting water into fabric paint or having heat but a moist heat might not be as thorough as say if you used a hairdryer which is just dry heat. He said that all areas are painted with set of color opaque and I said so the whole artwork feels like it's not dry and he said yes. I also say to him I don't want you to take this take what I say is the answer, but I'm thinking of the factors. Maybe it's the amount of layers you used, which is what we talked about before. 
I say, I have artworks with multiple layers like your jacket and they feel tacky, even years after the painting is done. But the artwork never washes off, which is the main thing I'm worried about. And that's like another reason why I guess I've always just stuck with set of color opaque is that even though things are tacky and it does feel, it does feel sticky, all of my jackets that are on sale on my online shop has gone through the cleaning process. So I know that all of the paint that are on these jackets currently will not come off unless someone really wants to get the paint off. Um, and then he asked, have you ever tried to scratch it off by hand to see if it comes off or not? I wanna try put it in the dryer and I don't wanna risk it. This is what I said. Yeah, I have scratched paint off only when I intentionally want the paint to come off. I think that with any sort of fabric paint, if you want to scratch the artwork off, it's gonna come off even with professional t-shirts you buy. I could pick logos and stuff off if I wanted. I think that's just a feature of any fabric paint. Same with tackiness. I have lots of band t-shirts with prints that almost feel jelly-like. I also say, I've thrown jackets in the dryer and they have been fine, but I never thrown I have never thrown a client's jacket in and I would be scared to. I always tell clients to never scratch or aggressively wash the design either for the same reason as it will deteriorate the artwork fast. Maybe it would be worth trying to hand wash it and see if the paint will stay on. I'm sh I'm pretty sure it will. I mean, I have stains on so many clothes of paint I didn't let dry or fuse and they stayed on my clothes forever. I have so many paints on clothes that I haven't even wanted. I have not even heat fused and the stains are there. So I think fabric paint, it will stick to your fabric. When you are tr troubleshooting on whether your fabric paint, so the binder essentially, is appropriate, I think there's nothing wrong with just trying to hand wash it because you also have control over hand washing your jacket and seeing if the water is actually um, affecting the fabric paint once it's sort of put onto the denim. And the thing is, is that especially if you've got layers, like for instance, for this guy, if he's got two layers of white and then he's got a color on top, he's gonna know when the layers start to come off because his color will come off, but not the white. So I feel like you also have, you've also got that as a safety net. And I'll just say this off of the bat, I have done a painting for someone I used to, I still do, little uh, custom hand-painted masks. I was painting on a mask for someone and I started, I started it off and I hated it so much. And I was only 10 minutes through that particular painting and I went to wash it off because I know that if fabric paint is wet and it's been on the fabric for a small amount of time, such as 10 minutes, there is chances for you to wash it off. The thing is though, is that when I tried to wash it off, it wasn't like completely zero fabric paint on the denim because I mean, especially if you work with denim where there's like a lot of rivets because it's a cotton drill, a lot of the fabric paint will actually seep into all these rivets and it will be very hard to get the fabric paint out. Very hard. So even when I, what did I do? I, I think I just sort of like, I, did, I vigorously, vigorously washed it with uh, detergent and I scratched it off with lots of hot water and cold water. Uh, even when I saw it and I knew that, that that was as much of the paint I could get off, there was still like the print of the paint on there. So if you think that you're going to be painting with something with fabric paint, especially something like set of color opaque and you feel like all the whole artwork is just going to wash off, that is hundred percent not going to happen. And I can, I can tell you that a hundred percent, there will still be remains of it left over. So even if you do hand wash something just to see how it goes, you will still have sort of the, the imprint of where your paint was. So you can sort of troubleshoot in that way and being like, okay, maybe it wasn't dried, reapply the paint and wait a little bit longer for it to dry. But I'm pretty sure you should be fine. You should be fine. I know of some types of paint that, I've, that I have um, done for people and they haven't washed it properly and it's faded but it hasn't it hasn't ruined the the jacket and this is where i also feel like you need to think of things like t-shirts you know over time when you buy a t-shirt with a fabric paint print on it yes it's going to look amazing for the first you know five or six washes but after that it fades i think it's cool it gives it like a cool vintage weird out look and it when you have especially very vibrant colors and they are they are sort of washed down, they almost become a little bit wearable because they're not so much in your face. I'm so sorry about how this whole 
video is literally just gonna be a stream of consciousness. I'm gonna try and organize this as much as I can. Yeah, and this is where I say, I've, been, I've even been 10 hours into painting and made a massive mistake and washed a garment straight away and even trying to wash wet fabric paint out completely out of the garment is very hard. And that's when you don't even give it time to dry. That is all the advice I can offer as that's what I would do in your situation. It may also be a formula issue, but I've, I've always used set of color as I found it's the most vibrant paint that I can get in my country. Maybe other paints might be better and I've never really had issues with set of color washing off. Good luck. And then I actually asked him what paints he used and he said that he has different methods. He says that he uses a range of regular acrylic with GAC 900, which I think is a medium. I've seen a couple times come up in my comments. I don't know how to pronounce this. Is it Angelus or Angelus <laughs> or neither? Uh, I've seen this paint actually come up and I think this paint's really good for leather. And then he also mentions Marabou and Deco Art. So I don't know, maybe that's also another video for me. We can go through all of the different fabric paints I would love that. And then I followed up with him. I followed up with him a week or so later, and he said that he was scared to throw the jacket into the dryer, so he just air hair dried it. It didn't really sound like he came to a solution. So that was very long, but this was just an example of fabric paint, I think. It can be a little bit fickle and I think you do need to sometimes rely on your own knowledge and your own practice and things like that to find solutions. And every time I get something in my comments, someone asks me like, this is happening, this is happening, what do I do? Sometimes I don't even have the answer to that. But my biggest thing is just like, you just need to experiment. You just need to do the experiment that I did before. Trial a couple of colors on a plastic container and see how they work. Trial a couple of colors on a piece of denim. Always trial your colors and different things if you're using like a different denim or a different medium. This is a practice and an industry where there isn't really much sort of transparency or like common knowledge when it comes to this sort of stuff. So the main sort of function of this two part series is the fact that, I mean, it's never, it's never supposed to give you cement solutions because I know depending on what sort of paints you use and like the context, even when um, this guy has said that he bought set of color opaque and they were in clearance. I thought as well when I heard that, maybe because they were in clearance they were old and maybe they, the paint started to dry out and the solvent started to evaporate, which means it would have been a lot more gloppy. But it, even small things like that, because I've actually, and I've bought paints that have been incredibly thick compared to other paints, which have been way more thinner than others in the set of color opaque range. So even just something like that being like, okay, what are the factors that sort of influence that? And to me, I have always thought, I always thought that because I'm in Australia and these paints are French, they obviously need to get imported and I buy them through a particular seller. And these particular paints, I feel like they had been on the shelf for a while and which is why one of them was just super thick. Whereas now when I buy set of color opaque and they're becoming increasingly rare, you know, here in Australia, uh, they're a lot more thinner and I feel like that's because they're a lot more fresh and they've just come from overseas. So yeah, these videos I hope gave you a lot of knowledge and I hope that you can sort of trust yourself to experiment a little bit more and trust yourself to apply the knowledge that you've learnt in these last two videos. If you do have any questions or problems, please uh, comment in my videos and I'll make sure to get to them when I have time. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're still here, if you've come this far, thank you so much. And I will see you all soon in the next video. Please make sure to give me a like and to subscribe if you want to see more things like this. I'm going out for some drinks. Lovely to see you guys. I hope you have a good night and I will see you soon.